when we first um, had the kids, the entire school worked on um, the art that was um, on our second quarter celebration. We had the primary kids, um, you know, they wanted to do something with painting. And after uh, the, at the end result, when we first looked at it, we're like, okay, maybe there is uh, something that we can do. You know, um, Lynn thought of um, the idea about um, having um, right, write a grant and to invite uh, Miss Annie Painter to our school because she's uh, been sharing clips about Annie and the types of artwork that she's uh, doing at different schools in the United States. So when I first saw that, I'm like, that's going to be interesting. And, you know, it's going to be fun also. It's, uh, it's going to be a learning experience for both the teachers and the students. Now you can go around and it's your turn to try oh. one. That's right. Look at that. That's great. Yeah. Well. About light right there. Yep. And now it's your turn to put one down. Did I find it? Yep. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's close enough, maybe. Or, or over. Blue. Right. There. Yeah. On the edge there. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Now it's your turn. Look, she, she nailed it. <laughs> So as I, as I think about what I really want to do for a school, it is to come in with a real curriculum so that a teacher might be able to have a set of skills that she could teach for a lifetime of teaching and a set of skills the kids could learn so they could make endless art, not just projects on Friday um, or whenever the, the special event was. For example, um, instead of making everybody the same Halloween pumpkins or everybody the same a winter snowman, I am giving the children color mixing skills, cutting and gluing skills, how designers use negative and positive shape or repetition to make beautiful patterns on whatever art they choose to make. So that actually um, this curriculum will leave the teacher with basic skills, color mixing, how to do a color wheel, um, a set of uh, child-friendly design elements and principles such as repetition, contrast, dominance, color mixing, and several projects including a struggling artist masterpiece which is something the kids do to explore the brushes and explore the paint and later on find the elements and principles of design using vocabulary words. Boys and girls, this is now the color mixing factory and our job is to make all these beautiful papers. Look what the other children have made already. Aren't they pretty? Yes. Oh, they're so beautiful. And when you come back to see me, you're going to cut and paste and make a beautiful creation out of these papers. But first we have to make the papers, okay? So, I'll show you just how I want you to work and you'll be beautiful artists. You love to paint, I'll bet. I want you to make every color in the rainbow. Look at all the colors. But, all I have is this color, and this color, and this color. How are we going to make so many with just three? Put them together. We are going to put them together and the word would be mix. And this is the color mixing factory and you are my color mixing artists. But let's say I wanted to make green. Let's figure out, first of all, what the names of these colors are. This one has a very interesting name. It's called cyan blue. Can you say it? Cyan blue. Is anybody wearing cyan today? You've got some blue on, okay? You've got, also, yes, that's right. You've got some too? Yes? Yeah. Yep. And this one is called magenta. Magenta, let's hear it again. Magenta. Great. You know this one. 
Yellow. Yellow. All right. Let's make some green. Now watch me. This is what you're going to get to do. I'm going to put some yellow down. And you're right, some cyan blue. Now watch really carefully. I'm going to pull some of the paint down. This is very, very, very strong paint. I don't need much. And I bring it to the center. Green. Look. Green. Green. It starts to make that beautiful green. Do you see? Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Yeah. Wrapping paper, okay? Just patterns, okay? I think you know what to do. Do you think you know what to do? Yeah. All right. I'd like You're going to do what's called a triple wad, and I want you to be really careful with this. The tendency is to get kind of crazy with this, and then what happens is that it rips. So control yourselves. Promise. No jumping up and down on it. No pounding on the table. Actually, so few elementary schools anywhere um, have what, what I would call a curriculum, which would be like a course of study. Um, if they do art at all, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's projects. It's maybe like something for Mother's Day or something for Earth Day, or it's a project that they love doing that's their specialty. It's a one-shot thing. Maybe it's more frequent than others, but there isn't a skill-building lesson that could be considered real art, in my view. Um, that would be child-friendly, something that the kids themselves could be very creative about, but that we would give the kids the benefit of knowing how to color mix if they want to make six greens and they're making a forest. So I caught myself a beautiful piece of paper, and on your table you'll see colors like this. Plenty of adults in the room to help us decide. Let's see, which two more colors? If I choose this one, it won't show up, will it? No. No. So I need to get two other colors. So if you were looking at this paper and you see all these colors, you could pick orange and that would show up. And you could pick the blue, right? Okay. So that's what I think I'll do. Now, boys and girls, you don't have to do any cutting on the first part. All you need to do is glue it down. But lots of times kids like to make a puzzle first. So we want to see if we can put all the shapes on there and make a beautiful piece of paper with sh big shapes on it. So if I have that blue there, I don't want to put another one there, maybe right here. Is that pretty? See what I'm doing? And let's see, this is orange as well. It doesn't have to be the same orange. Oh my gosh, it's just a little too big. What should I do? 
so if I can only use two colors, I don't want to put blue there again, or do I? I know what I could do. I could do this, and then I could make another little one like a puzzle here. And that's the first step. How many colors? One, two, three, right? One background and two on there. A negative space. Can you get that, please? Now look. This is kind of a nice shape. Could you put that somewhere? No, no. Just put it where you can see it. Look at maybe up there. See, that's where it came out of. That nice. Hey, just look at my mom's soul like this. One, do you want to use That's it? That's like my mom's own. <gasps> Go ahead, do that one. Okay, I want the plant to be as beautiful and big as the whole paper. So you'll find three kinds of paper at your desk. Bag. Is that a good stem? Yes. It is a good stem. It's a beautiful stem. And I'm going to just lay it down there so that I don't, I will glue it just a little bit. Isn't that nice? Well, it's, now what do I need? Roots. Okay, give me root shapes. All right, I don't know, but let me try something I haven't tried for a while and see if I can do this. I'm going to start here and I'm going to go up and up. And you could cut these just separately and make excellent roots, but I'm making Those little shapes like this. But look what's happening when I cut the space between. I'm getting more. So let's see what happens. You could just make things like that for roots, couldn't you? I've been standing here staring in disbelief because these are some of the most beautiful, developmentally appropriate flowers with all the real plant parts, but never in my 30 years of teaching first graders these kinds of things have an entire class understood the scale. We were trying to make a seed that grew way off the page and they got it. I think there's, there's something in this particular group of kids that is really strong visual learner. I'm always impressed, with the exception of one or two classes and a few kids, when I demonstrate something, they get it from seeing it. And these are an example. I've just been so impressed. They're gorgeous, and they use the negative and positive space. <clears throat> I've also instructed all of our adults not to do the work for them but instead just refer them to our criteria, which would be, well, do you have two for one there? Could you use the negative space? And no problem. And they've got all the plant parts. So I had to keep them in here. I couldn't let them go.
when, when I came in with um, Mrs. Leslie Borsinas' class and saw how engaged the kids were and how easy it was to learn and what they learned, I was really surprised. <music> So far, so good. <laughs> so now the fun part comes. Your fish. We're gonna. You can make gills. You can make whatever you want to on it. Let's just look at some fish pictures, the way other artists have done fish, because you need to make a pattern on your fish. Now this one, you know, you've all probably read the Rainbow Fish books. Uh huh. Look at these. These have nice patterns in the in the fins. Raise your hand if you've ever used a coloring book. You've colored in the lines. Okay, you're going to make your own coloring book. Okay, so you know if someone just went like that, there'd be nothing to color in, would there? You have to make a line that makes a shape. So I'm thinking about that it was really wonderful. I'm going to start like that. I'm going to go light. And then I'm going to do that and that. See how I got a little idea from a whole bunch of different fish and it's totally new? So now I have to name it, it's my fish. The art class, this is something new to the kids and it's really, you know, they're very open to it and they're very creative as well. And uh, the kids are just excited. So masks, masks have been used by folks for about 33,000 years for everything from protection to sports. So I made a checklist of the things I want you to try. This would be like afterward if we were going to go sit around and say with your teacher, so how do we do? We look at this checklist and we say, is it unique? That means it can never before be seen. It's not a mask that you've ever seen before. It's something you created brand new. It's as different as you are from other children. It's symmetrical in the base. Well, that is a wonderful way so that when you start with your, ma your mask decorating, it's the same on both sides. It kind of opens up like a pop-up. So I'll show you how to do that. And I found this mask, <clears throat> the mask pattern that helps us do symmetry. Symmetry, the same on both sides, like a butterfly. 
I wanted to have all the face features of an animal or a human, but it's neither one. So it has eyes, it has a nose, but maybe why don't I teach you to make a beak? And you can change the beak to be a nose or whatever. It will make something nose-like. It also has, could have ears if you want, but beyond that, go for it. challenge you to make what I call boisterous birds. This is the word, boisterous. Let's have that be a vocabulary word this week. And it's an adjective which describes the kind of bird we want to see. But look what it is. The bird is lively, exuberant, spirited, rambunctious, meaning it's really full of play and fun. It's unruly, rough, uncontrolled. It's out of control. And it is a riotous, noisy, and loud bird. So what I want you to create is a bird that looks like those words. Mine doesn't have eyes yet, but yours will. I was thinking about making some kind of a crown like birds have on top of their head. Just, and I like to cut. I wouldn't draw first. I like to just cut because Sometimes when you draw first, you get all wound up and think it doesn't look good, like that. But then I like to also cut other shapes out of it so that it has some design inside of it. So you saw what I did. I just made another fold, cut a shape, and cut some shapes out of it. I open it up. And I could put it here, and I could actually take a small piece and put behind it so that it would show through. Or this could be feathers on its tummy. Do you like that on the tummy? I do. I think it's good feathers on the tummy. When I'm making things, sometimes I just make shapes and I figure out later where they go. Thank you. 
I've learned a lot and I'm thinking of integrating it with science, I mean, especially science. And then when you do the hands-on with the science, especially like the plant parts, cells, especially cells, and we do some of these, kids are going to love this. Um, anybody can do it. The teachers were able to creatively create their own piece of art, just as the children did, and it was very successful. We thank you, Annie, for having the opportunity to travel all the way to the Pacific. Um, we will showcase all your work and continue the curriculum, and we are a believer in Annie's Art Institute. Thank you very much.